In this video, you understand and create a piling layout. Piling can be placed along with standard pile caps and piles that are included with Revit, or you can add your own piles to structural foundations. In the example below, a foundation slab has piling set out. The right hand image shows a ground beam with piling added. In this video, you will learn techniques to set out the piling. It's also important to get the correct material quantities. So in this video, you will also learn how to switch join order to ensure that the piles cut the pile caps correctly. Go ahead and open up project A. The project opens in the 3D view. In this lesson, we're going to set out some piling on our lift pit using a combination of array and groups. Let's begin by switching to the negative O2 lift pit plane. In the project browser, double click on negative 02 lift pit. We'll then zoom up on the lift pit area and we're going to set out our piles on this foundation slab. To place down the first isolated pile on the structure ribbon in the foundation panel, select structural foundation isolated. In the properties palette in the type selector, you'll note here that as well as placing out pile caps and piles, we also have the nested steel pipe so in this example here, we're going to use the 500 millimeter diameter. In the properties palette, you'll also notice here that we have height offset from level. So our foundation slab is 900 thick. So to set this out correctly at the bottom of the foundation slab, we'll type in negative 900. We're now ready to place down our first pile. To do this, we're going to place this on the bottom left hand corner at the intersection of the two walls. Essentially, this is the grid intersection. We'll now use the array command to set out the first line of piles. To do this, we'll select modify to release the foundation command. We'll select the pile and on the context ribbon, you'll note here we have array. Notice that you can use the keyboard shortcut AR. On the options bar, note here that we're using a linear array. We're going to group and associate the piles that will allow us to adjust the spacings and positions afterwards if we wanted to. We'll set the number of piles up in a minute and then a bit further along, you can see here that we can either pick the second position or we can pick the last position. So in this case, I'm going to pick the last position. So I'll pick here to start and then pick here to end. Revit then asked me for the quantity of these piles. So we'll type in six here and press enter. You can now see that we have our first piling layout. Now what we want is three rows in this direction. So rather than arraying these again, I'm simply going to use the copy tool. So we'll select the piles like this. Now notice here that when I make this selection, I'm also getting the wall underneath. So of course I can go to the filter option on the context ribbon and here we'll remove the walls just so we've got model groups. We can then go to the context ribbon and select copy. On the options bar, let's ensure that we have multiple checked. To start the copy, we can pick up the piles from this location here. We'll then go to the midpoint of these walls and then finally to the end point of the wall here. And there's our piling layout. To release the copy command, we can press escape or we can select modify. And now what we're going to do is ungroup the piles. This is quite an important step because what we'll need to do shortly is switch the join order on these piles. So let's first ungroup them. So we'll make a selection set of all of the groups. Again, on the context ribbon, we'll use the filter option here, check none, and we'll just make sure that we've got the model group selected. Notice on the context ribbon, we can ungroup. OK, so there's our piling layout. What we're now going to do is create a section through the piles. To do this, on the quick access toolbar, we'll select section. I'll begin by sketching a section roughly where I want the section to go, perhaps something like this. We'll change the depth of section just so we're elevating one row of piles and what I want to do is cut directly through the center of all of these piles. So on the context ribbon we can use the align command or you can type in AL which is the keyboard shortcut. I can pick the horizontal center of this pile here and then of course the section line. Again I can press escape or click the modify button to release the command and we'll then go ahead and look at the section. Now, of course, when we study this section, let's just zoom in down the bottom here. I'll change the scale to one to 25 so we can see it a bit easier. We can quite clearly see that the arrangement here isn't quite what we were expecting. Now, the reason is that the piles have in fact joined to the structural foundation, but the join order needs reversing. 
So let's do this first. We'll switch back to the negative 0, 02 lift pit plane. On the modify ribbon, we'll go to the join pull down menu, and here we'll use switch join order. Notice on the options bar, we've got the option of having a multiple switch, which is exactly what we want. What I do first is select the foundation slab, and then I can go ahead and select all of the foundations, and that's now switched all of those foundations round. So now, if we go ahead and take a look at the section, you can now see that the piles are correctly cut in the foundation underneath. And again, just to check this in the 3D view, we'll switch to the 3D view like this. We'll select this foundation slab here, and on the view control toolbar, we'll use the temporary hide isolate tool, and we'll isolate this element. And of course, we can clearly see now that we have penetrations ready to accept all of our piles. And of course, when I select this, that will then give me the correct volume of concrete. And of course, the piles will also have the correct volume as well. So let's now reset the temporary hide isolate. So we can select the temporary hide isolate tool and we'll reset this. We'd also ensure that we've saved our project. So we'll click on save. And that concludes this video and also this module on foundations.